Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Do you remember when I was uh, uh, doing my live missions, which I'll probably start again uh, in a while, but I got distracted with Onslaught. <laughs> uh, remember when I played the Burask? I think I was uh, playing the tank that killed me. And I was playing the Burask and I just, I know I went through this big spiel about how fantastic the Burask was. And I just put it together, you, you watched me just uh, equip it, put a crew in, just take it out for the first time on the, what was it on the EU server? I said, yeah, it's a fantastic tank. I wouldn't be surprised if I do well. And then I just rolled out and got nine kills and, and aced it and just first game. Did you remember you guys watch that video? Uh, illustrating my unicomness? Live? Well, um, I haven't showed a, a, any a Buras games since then, I don't think, because you know I didn't want to detract from my greatness. I wanted you to have the uh, the memory of my greatness fresh in your minds and not distracted by uh, someone else's luck, right? But there comes a time when we have to uh, show uh, a Buras game, and so I thought I'd uh, pick one here. This Buras happens to uh, be top tier. What is his name? Anatoliwo from the C4VE clan. Is that the cave clan, I guess? Shout out to you guys. Finds himself in fantastic matchmaking. And he's going to give us a, a show on, uh, on the Burask. And I guess kind of also illustrate why the Burask shouldn't really be fighting tier sixes. Uh, but, you know, occasionally. It... Occasionally, you're going to end up fighting tier 9s and 10s. So why not occasionally fight tier 6s? That's a whole other discussion. But I mean, I guess I feel sorry for the tier 6s. And he's moved up aggressively, uh, hoping to maybe make someone pay for crossing this, this open area. But the enemies have not. So sometimes moving into position, like if that easy 8 tried to come across here, he would have pounded him. And a tier 6 only has... 8 900 HP, right? And, and this gun takes two shots of 360 each. That's uh, 720. Two high rolls could kill a tier six. <laughs> so, and, and he can take the two shots, you know, boom, boom. So, uh, this thing's devastating. Let's just uh, watch him at it. And so far, I think he's. He's thinking, oh man, I'm top tier and I have, I've got no value out of this game so far. He went to a fight. This happens sometimes. It's not his fault. He went to a, a particular flank and there's no enemies there. So, so far, you look at the stats of the game, you go, our top tier Buras did nothing. Yeah. That's just bad luck. That happens sometimes. But he quickly realizes it. There was an option to keep flanking. Look at the minimap here. He could have kept going down here. Maybe kill the artillery. Maybe come up behind those enemies. Because you look at the minimap and you... You can count the dots. Look at the minimap again. There's a lot of dots here. Can you count them quickly in your head? And there's an easy aid and an artillery. And you add all those up. And it's uh, possible that he could have... Uh, ooh, a scorpion. That's a, a very uh, valuable target. Let's see if he can do it. One. And two. <coughs> If you can count the dots and you say, yeah, they're all there, except for the easy end in your artillery, he could have scooted across. You have to be the count. You have to count things. Ah, ah, ah. Just, uh, you know, it's uh, something, and I didn't count them. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, when you count the easy eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, there's, yeah, they're all there. The only, the only guys... That's, the, the only people that in this portion of the map, the southwest corner, is the artillery possibly. And um, so he could have done the flanking maneuver. And then come up behind that T-29. Uh, yada, yada, yada. But he chooses to go to the middle. Which is a, you know, a different strategy. But just a FYI, right? You can... Because he could have got... The, the T-29 obviously is pointed that direction. He could have come up behind him. Uh, that any missed. Oh! He's, ha he's having a game that he would probably uh, not feel happy about uh, being top tier so far. But let's just keep watching. Now look at all his teammates here. You see this? 
Well, let's pause it here one minute because this is important, right? If you had counted the dots, which I just did, you wouldn't, and you were playing this game, you would know that all the enemies are here. Look at the mini-map. Let's make it bigger. All of them are here. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that eight? Seven enemies are here and a last known position of an easy eight there. So seven of them are here. Let's count now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then the easy eight. There's a Jackson and a Hummel. Uh, there's two, not necessarily the Jackson and the Hummel, that are unaccounted for. So there's an artillery here and one other person, unless that's, that's a lot, another little dot there. So uh, basically, let's keep it going here. Basically, these guys here, look at these guys. Let's go back to the minimap. These three guys. These guys, one, two, three. This band of brothers right here are losing the game because they stop there and they're waiting. And this happens all the time on this map. They're not pushing in the south flank. They're waiting because they can't count. Uh, and this team is losing the north, which is the more important flank. Okay? And if nothing else happened, this game would be a loss. But the Buras launches into action now. So you could say to yourself, Okay, Mr. Buras, you were top tier. You're fast. you got mobility. He could have flanked when I mentioned it about three minutes ago. And if he did that, he would be over here. Look at the minimap. He'd be in a position somewhere over here, shooting the rears of all those tanks. He would be. He would have taken out the T-29. He would have kept them lit. Uh, and would have had a, a, a just a beautiful opportunity shooting the backs of the tanks. But he's driven around kind of in the middle. A little bit of a waste of time. But he, you know, it's, it's working now. Now he's, he's found a perfect enemy that he can flank. But you see, this is how you lose on this map is when one team splits its force and half of them go north and half of them go south or you know 60 40 or whatever and one enemy focuses one flank usually the north and the enemy focuses the north and your team splits and then the team that goes to the south where there's no enemies uh, they're too stupid to count the dots and they don't realize well we're sitting here doing nothing because there's no enemies here and they just sit there and wait. And now look, now look at, look at you, now you stupid tanks, right? Now, now what's happened is they've lost the north flank. And the guys that went south, his teammates there, are floundering, not participating. So now it's going to be up to him. He tells his teammates, don't push. And this is how so many games are lost on this map. Uh, so, you know, a little bit of a map tactic there. But I also have to point out, Burask, you could have like our hero here which not detracting from his gameplay because he's going to have an amazing game but he could have counted the dots himself and realized what was going on and made an initial flanking maneuver maybe his teammates would have followed him and if he drove all the way around here maybe killed the artillery and came up this way maybe that would have helped his teammates in the medium tanks grow some balls because they would have said, oh, look, he made it all the way there. Because they're scared, right? They're going, oh, I don't know. Because they can't count. They don't know that all the enemies are in the north. They, maybe their mini-maps are this big. And they can't count. Or they don't count. Or they, they really don't understand how the game works. They're, not, they're just not sure. But if he made that flanking maneuver, his teammates may have a follower. They may have said, oh, look, he's gone all the way over there. He, you know, he's not dead. Let's go. Gives them, spurs them on. So if he did that initial flanking maneuver, I bet his teammates would have followed him. They would have farmed the re they would have had the the northern flank in a crossfire while his teammates were still alive. His teammates would have been fighting frontally, and he and his other guys would have uh, had them in a in a crossfire. Right? But instead, he hesitated a lot, and his uh, the other guys that went south did nothing, and now he's in a situation where he's by himself versus six. But he's in a Buras top tier, so now we you know, get to enjoy what's going to happen next. Which is he will bounce, because he's shooting a Russian tank, and now he will, uh, he will pen. And, uh, and low roll, because it's a Russian tank. <laughs> You're losing! It's one versus six. Let's see how many high rolls he has now. Because now it's one versus six. He's on the losing side. 
Let's see. I'm interested to see how many high rolls he has in low roll. He's had one low roll so far. But you see what I'm saying? This game could have been an easy victory. So we're watching this for two reasons. Once, one, to see his amazing one versus six now. But secondly, to explain how this should have been an easy victory. Uh, but it turns into being an almost loss. Because of poor tactics. On, and it, shot on the move. And you're got Okay, he, he gets a critical hit. Shot on the move. His gun's taken up. His repair kit's gone. Remember, he's losing. He's got losing RNG now. <laughs> That's how you lose on this map. Is by not uh, uh, figuring out what... A tactical mistake. His team made a, a complete tactical blunder. The southern flank. If they lose this game, it's his fault and his teammates that went south. Okay. Let's see now. What is he doing? This, they're coming across. A KV-3 has come across. And a T-29 has come across. Uh, there's a Canarvis. I would go here. Look at the minimap. That little knoll. He's headed for it right now. This grassy knoll. Because you can shoot there and then pull back. And, uh, the artillery's blind. I don't know what this Canarvis is doing. Uh, these are kill shots, so they don't count... Uh, no, that one's a ghost shell. This shell, or hit a railing, Klaus. Oh, hit the railing. Sure, sure it did. Of course it did. You're gonna have to fight. No, stay on the grassy knoll, because if you get spotted on the grassy knoll, you can pull back. On that grassy knoll, if you pull back now and someone comes on the grassy knoll, there's nowhere for you to run. There. Now he can take out the KV-3. These enemies know what they're doing. They're, they're worried, right? They're worried. Okay, the KV-3. T-29. T-20. Does he not know that he's spotting the T-29 now? Oh, yeah. Poor guy. He's a, okay, now take the T-29. Let's, let's check his rolls here. Armor not hit. And um, go shell miss. He, he's losing now, guys. I, I, what I'm saying about this uh, losing RNG is... Um, he's missed all his shots and low rolled. And the one hit he took as he's reversing on the move, someone shot him and took out his gun. <laughs> but now, okay, this is... Even Wargaming can't stop this. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just observe his RNG now. He's still losing now by how many? Four. It's getting it's gonna get better now. <laughs> oh cuz it's just random. Yeah, sure. Okay, oh this will be a kill shot, so let's see. This one here. Beautiful. Low roll. <laughs> but this will work. Beautiful. All low rolls, misses and bounces, but he's got him, and now he should be able to take out the Carnarvon. Oh, yeah, I, he could be spotted there. Oh, he did not get spotted, okay. Take out the Carnarvon. He'll take out the Carnarvon. Carnarvon is a weak tank. Now, don't, don't rush in there! Why would you do that? Just change your angle. Okay. I don't know why he did this, but he's got, he's got full HP. You could have taken him out. Just aimed your shot. Eh, he's gonna get it. Oh, it, it didn't penetrate, guys. And they oh, and they took his commander out. Boy, it's almost like he was losing, and he's getting worse RNG. He's lost his gun and his commander in the two shots that hit him. And he's bounced everything except the ones that are just well, he auto locked. That was his fault. Yeah, of course it was. <laughs> Okay, now he's going to take out the T-29. Anyways, the important uh, part of this is the, the tactics that we uh, uh, talked about at the beginning. Right? This is all just that uh, we're having fun now. But the tactics uh, were important. Now he can take a shot on T-29. Oh, and he's got... This would be beautiful. He's going to roll higher than 360 now. Oh, no, he missed. <laughs> he's, got, he's got good RNG. Oh, he low rolled. He's losing. And he's low rolled every shot... Or missed, or bounced. He's been hit twice. 
took out his gun and his driver, and then he got penned once. Or did he? Yeah, took out his uh, commander or driver when he got penned. The two shots that hit him were um, either crew or... Yeah, anyway. It's just random RNG is what it is. Come on, you don't have a lot of time now. See, if he made his flanking maneuver, he would have uh, killed the uh, artillery as well. Okay, you had a shot. Why, did, why didn't you stop? I think this guy... Oh, he spotted the Hummel! Oh, he bounced! Wargaming really wants you to lose this game, buddy. Wargaming really wanted you to lose it. Wargaming, if it's not obvious to you, uh, then there's no hope for you, but Wargaming wanted him to lose this game so badly. They wanted him to lose so badly. But he says, screw you. I win anyway. So pretty nice, eh? He won one versus six. He gets Kolobanov's medal, which is uh, amazing. Fantastic uh, uh, game there. Capsule. And uh, you helped us um, learn a little bit about the map tactic on that particular map. So that was, uh, you know, we killed two birds with one stone. Now, undeniably, that was a fantastic result. Way to go, buddy. And I had not watched uh, that game. Guys, I'll just let you know, when I, when I do these, when I select the games... I select them on certain criteria, but I don't pre-watch the game so I know what's going to happen. I like to do it when I'm... So you can see me be surprised when something happens. It's more fun for me to do the commentary if I haven't seen the game. And uh, as soon as he was by himself versus six, I already... I, I'm a veteran. I already know. I already know what to expect, right? Uh, I know to expect that every time he gets hit, it's going to be a module damage or crew killed. And I know that every shot he's going to take is a low roll or a bounce. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the way it is. It's uh, so many times. When, when, when you're losing at the end, when you're winning at the end, now if his team was up by uh, uh, seven tanks... He'd be driving around full speed, just whipping his turret around to snap, hit him. He's on fire. It's a dumb, it's a stupid video game, right? No, that's not true. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's one of the things that makes people rage in this game, right? It, guys, uh, it, it makes, it, when you're on the losing side, it makes you rage. <laughs> Because it keeps getting worse. Fuck! But when you're on the winning side, it makes you euphoric. Because, like, you can't do anything wrong. And and it accelerates and snowballs. And that's uh, that creates dynamic range. Highs and lows. The losers are, you know, want to smash their computers and throw their keyboards uh, out the window. And the winners are so, so happy they, uh, uh, you know, that, that's the that's the recipe for uh, uh, success. That's why golf is popular. I've, I've told you this analogy before, right? Because you could have one sh amazing shot gives you the euphoria, and then uh, most of the time you're being trolled. <laughs> that's why gambling's popular. Right? Why do you think people get addicted to gambling? If there was no euphoria and devastation... The more the dynamic range, the more uh, uh, recipe uh, for being addicted. That's what gets humans addicted. It's just uh, just the way it is. That's why Vegas uh, makes so much money, and that's why people uh, play the slot machines and gamble, because uh, you know they pull that lever and they're either super ecstatically happy or pissed off because they lost money. That's why like uh, poker is just such a you ever played poker? Like Texas Hold'em? <laughs> this, this teammate is just a pain in the ass. I played some tournaments and holy shit, you know, you, you're you playing a tournament where you, uh, a Texas Hold'em and you, it costs you 20 bucks. And there might be 200 people in the tournament. It's, you ever Texas Hold'em? So you pay 20 bucks and then you play cards. So really, you're risking $20. And you're having some fun. They bring you free food. And it's kind of, you know... Usually when you're playing a Texas Hold'em tournament, you could play for hours. So, you know, 20 bucks you get to play for 
a cup if you don't get thrown out immediately if you're if you at all know the game and play carefully you're not going to get uh, uh, booted out or lose all your chips in the first 10 minutes you could last an hour easily so it's fun it's an activity and if you finish in the top uh, you know five or six you get a portion of the pot and if 200 people put in 20 bucks uh, then they say the top the final table the top six get a portion of the pot of the collective money. The house takes probably 50% and then they divvy up the rest. So if you win the tournament, you might win like 300 bucks or something or 500 bucks. I, I don't know. Whatever. Well, so you really only have 20 bucks at stake, but every hand, the emotional, um, the, the emotional release on every hand is huge. You know, you're, You've got uh, uh, 300 chips in the pot, which uh, and you've put in 30 of them of your 1,500 you start with. And uh, you've got a hand and you, you need a seven or a nine. And when those cards are, are coming down, the, the emotional rush and the uh, adrenaline and the, the horm hormonic uh, the euphoria that's created, <laughs> I just made that up, is, is incredible. If, if you get if you're waiting on a seven and you get that seven you're jumping in the air yes right if you're waiting for that seven you know you, the last card comes up and if it's a seven you got a straight but if it, anything else you really don't have anything and then it's a jack of clubs you're like oh fuck. you don't want to show that emotion because you're playing to, you know you have to wear sunglasses and, and look calm but it's like the dynamic range is huge that's why it's like after the tournament you're exhausted and you're just uh, you you're addicted that's why people become addicted to uh, uh, uh gambling and playing those games if it was just a predetermined uh, no um no surprises outcome and uh, his game is glitching then uh yeah you wouldn't bother playing You'd, you'd be bored after, like you ever do Sudoku? Like after you've done five or six Sudokus. <laughs> right? That's why you get, you get Sudoku for free in the paper. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, that's the a dynamic range. Um, instills emotional uh, reactions which uh, result in addiction which uh, results in success for the uh, developer which means more money uh, more revenue as more people play and more people um, try and uh, compensate for the uh, the dynamic range and the the losing part of the RNG by um, by spending resources to increase their chances by buying the equipment and buying the uh, uh, the shells with the more penetration and the faster shell velocity and the blah blah blah. You want you want you want to uh, maximize your potential to be on the euphoric end of the reaction than on the the rage end of the reaction. That's why it gives you the incentive to spam the gold right and the, the load the heat and the, uh, get all that stuff <laughs> it's a beautiful marketing uh, uh, it, it's very smart it's very smart um, and uh, un unfortunately not understood by many right well, many people will uh, like many people mistake this uh, uh, this this video game we play for, for it like a equated to some fair um, you know like something fair and honorable it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a device designed to make money by instilling uh, emotional reactions in you while you participate. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not like I said. It. Most things are not rocket science. Okay. So, having said all that, a little bit of a aside.
We did learn a little bit about map tactics, and now we're enjoying this uh, Stug. Who's having a great game, you know? Uh, we, what is his name? Mac the Noob. We didn't even introduce Mac the Noob. I'm sorry, Mac. He's got six kills. Low tier gameplay is uh, kind of fun. He's in the Stug, which is in one of my uh, favorite tanks. It's a very close game, right? It's a very close game. His teammates are moving up. They're the moving on up. There's two camping pussies at the end, which, hey, they're camping in a position that Wargaming provided for them. Now, who should go? Mikey needs to go. Who should go spot the two noobs? If he goes, he'll die. Can you hear the bell? This video needs to end soon because Marty needs to poop. Just a second, Marty. I'm coming. I gotta let him out. He rings the bell. Ring my bell, ring my bell. Why are you going this way? Do you see the last known positions of the enemies? What are you doing? I guess he's taking the big flanking maneuver. He's doing World of Tanks greatest flanking maneuver of all time to get a different angle. Did it work? It did. Now just stop and shoot. And now if he shoots, he will miss because he's far away. <laughs> Hold on, Marty. Do you hear the bell? Marty, can you hold it for... I think this game is going to be over in like 30 seconds. And then I'm going to wrap the video up. And then it's time. i got to let Marty out and then take him for a walk. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Let's just watch. I guess this was a smart move, getting to a different angle. Now he's stopping. He's indecisive. What, or you can't... You don't have the engine power? What the hell are you doing? If they make a mistake, they could lose the game. Right? They could lose this game. So he's, he's been... Keep going. He's being very meticulous. He want, doesn't want to just get... If he just rushes forward and gets spotted, he could die. Because he could be so lonesome. He could die. And now he's farming this T... Oh, the T-28 fired back. And he has not moved. The T-28 has not moved. And he's taking him out. Oh, beautiful. So his flanking maneuver worked. And now... Now he surges forward. Oh, the guy's gone behind. Topography. I think the Valentine's got this guy covered, doesn't he? Mr. Valentine. Yes. Oh, he's got some shots. This is beautiful. Boom. Yes. Penetration. Oh, he missed. <laughs> the Valentine could die. Boom. Yes. I'm glad he took him out because Marty needs to take a shit. I'm glad he didn't have to chase him around for another two minutes. Mac the noob. From the Vomit Clan. Does all okay, I'm coming, Marty. That's it. That's all I got, guys. He lost a shit ton of credits. Because why not? Because that's the other thing. Uh, the house always wins. They take your credits. Whether you're in Vegas or whether you're playing this game. Same model. Okay? I'll catch you guys on the next one. Coming, Marty!